They've got some great receivers, does Ole Miss. A very athletic receiving group that is big, they're rangy, and they've got lots of guys that can blow the top off of a defense. Ole Miss has one of the most prolific offenses in the country. Unbelievable what this core of receivers for Ole Miss can do. Hey, let's get it going! Throw the end zone, right corner, Metcalf. Hauls it in, touchdown, Ole Miss, DK Metcalf. Slings one over the middle, watch. He's got his second touchdown. Bravo wants to throw, and he's going deep. A.J. Brown is wide open. He makes the catch at the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10, the 5. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Arthur Brown, that's a bad man. Arthur Brown, long throw up the seam on a dime. D.K. Metcalf, touchdown. You want to check out the receiver? That look below. Nasty wide out that's NWO. Hello. Yeah. 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 I'm in the booth. The nasty wide outs, they are a group of guys that can single handedly take over a football game. The NWO means to me is just freakish receivers, man. Receivers that we know we can count on to make big time plays and big time games for us. I'm a firm believer that we have the best receiving core in the nation. Just watching them make the plays that they make. This is incredible. I just think of like unbelievable catches. Demarcus Lodge twisting his body to catch that back shoulder fade. Has a man passes caught. Demarcus Lodge. DK, the first when we played Florida State, his first game, he he tipped it to us at a touchdown. I'm like, oh man. Jump ball. Caught. Touchdown. DK Metcalf. A hometown kid. Welcome to college football. I think they have the ability to build a player on Madden. And if we were going to build a player, I think you would build DK. Uh, that, that's what you would want him to look like. DK is, is a little longer and taller, but he reminds me of uh, the physique of Evander Holyfield. He just looks like he's chiseled out of stone. AJ is special to guys as well. You know, he's going to make plays, he's going to make guys miss. So it's special when the ball's in his hands. And even as a coach, you've been around a lot of good players and seen a lot of good plays. But a couple of those, you're like, hey. <laughs> that's a that's a that's that's impressive. While each member of the NWO competes for the most scores on the field, off the field, senior wide receiver Demarcus Lodge takes the cake in motivation and humor. That is one of the most funniest guys ever. He's the loosest one out of all of us. Some Kool-Aid in there. What's the number one ingredient you add to it? Fruit Bunch. Yeah! That's my guy. You know, Lodge, uh, when I first came in, me and Lodge clicked right away. Hey, soon to be the best receiver in the country. Mark my word. He's an energy feeder, and, and the guys feed off that, and they love it. He's going to come out there. He's going to have fun, joke around. But when it's time to put the ball down and get serious, he's ready to play. For most, an injury would dampen the spirits. However, for Lodge, getting hurt was a way to continue to add his unique flavor to the team. This last spring, he was kind of what I call our sideline general. He had some injuries, and he just has the ability to bring a, a different kind of vibe, a different kind of excitement to the room. Well, at first I wasn't practicing uh, early in the spring, so I knew I had to bring something out and uh, get those guys going. So I thought, hey, I got a silly side, so why not just bring it all out naturally? So We just established we're going to be the first guys on touchdowns to go down and and do a funny celebration or just jump on whoever scores. So it ended up, if however long the touchdown was, me and him were running about 50 yards down the field, right next to each other, just sprinting. Touchdown! Touchdown! I saw a different side of him this spring and just his excitement and, and his personality. And I'm excited to see that continue to grow and excited to see, you know, that same green flash and a red, red, white, and blue jersey this year outrunning everybody to an end zone like he did this spring. Lodge's humor might be no shock to fellow Rebels, but hearing a teammate's voice on a TV broadcast might catch people off guard. Here Six, we go in five, five four, four, three, two, two one. Up and, and we're go. working. AJ Brown joining us in the booth. Guy that used to play a little baseball as well. AJ, what's up, man? Not much. I'm glad to be here. Good to see you. Um, do you miss baseball? That's question number one. 
I have to be honest. I do. I do. I wish I'd have played play here, you know. And after your athletic career, mm -hmm. what do you want to do? Sports broadcaster. Yeah, I would love to do that. You know, uh, that was my first experience of me really just being behind the mic back there, and uh, I loved it. NFL draft last night, round one. What's it like watching that draft, but maybe allowing yourself to dream a little bit too? Yeah, I think about it. I think about it, but I just try to stay focused on what I'm doing now. So I don't try to let it go to my head. I think he'd be good at whatever he chooses to do because not only is he talented, he's just got that smile. And anytime you enjoy what you're doing, I think uh, I think it will really come out. I was taking pictures and everything. I'm like, like this is what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's like the funnest thing ever. <laughs> he said that was fun. Yeah. I really want to do like a football game or something like that, but baseball is fine. You know, I want to be like on the field talking, you know, reporting. And um, I loved it, so I think that's what I want to do for real after after my career. So I want to do this for the rest of my life. I mean, like the football, baseball, even today, I won't hesitate. That's not that's not a job, you know. That's something I love to do. While AJ's future plans will keep him around sports indefinitely. The third member of the NWO knows one day he will trade his cleats for a cleaver. Did you know that AK Metcalf wanted to be a cook? No, nah, I didn't. <laughs> I did it. He's a cook? Like a... I did not. I will not let him cook for me. I like, like a cook? Oh, <laughs> not another. <laughs> I used to live with DK, and he never cooked at our house before. Well, they're scared to eat my food. I send them pictures of my cooking all the time, then they always have some criticism to say. DK and I are gonna have a cook-off here sometime this year. We were meant to do it last year and it didn't get done, but that's coming. Did you guys know that today is the cook-off between DK Metcalf and Coach Longbottom? Really? Yes. Are you sure DK's just not talking? Probably can cook. Hey, because we had steaks from Longo before. They are pretty good. Well, with Coach Longo, I expect nothing but the best. He's a perfectionist. So I expect that same thing with his cooking. Uh, with DK, you know, he's kind of a wild card. Have you ever eaten DK's food before? I have. He dropped off a couple trinkets from his his class or wherever he was cooking. They were, I won't tell him, but admittedly they were phenomenal. We, we're trying to keep it a little secretive so, you know, it won't be no uh, biased opinions. You know, but everybody knows I got the best dish, though. So. All right, DK, let's see what we got. Oh, you uh, take that bite. I don't need no. No flavors, <laughs> separate <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Wipe that off. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, so they're both, they're both very good. This one right here just has more flavor. I like this one. I was a little nervous though. Um, I thought Coach for long had a little flavors in his back pocket that I ain't know about, but you know, I just, you know, depending on my flavors and you know my cooking, pulled out the duck. The NWO has been a pillar of the offensive success over the last two years, but unfortunately, this season they will have to finish without one of their founding members. Uh, injuries, DK Metcalf. He hurt his neck. It's a little bit more serious than we thought, and um, he'll he'll be done for the season. Your brother, neck injury. Yeah. You uh, give us some thoughts on that. Where you coming from? And uh, I don't even want to get emotional, honestly. Uh, with that, I mean, tremendous player you know, suffered suffered that. And honestly, he doesn't deserve that, especially of everything he's been through. And, how hard he's worked this offseason, how we worked this offseason, and it's just. We're still looking to make sure that we uh, have the very best care and everything for him, um, but I, it's not a long-term issue. It's just, uh, but but it is going to be one we'll be, he'll be done for the season. Coach always had had the uh, next man up mentality, so K went down, uh, wishing the best, hated for him, but uh, I always had the next man up mentality, so I just got to step up, have big shoes to fill. Well, uh, Coach Luke, you know, Coach Longo, Coach Peeler, they all came and saw me at the hospital. Today I got the news and you know, I, I still feel like I'm part of the team. And that's, that's real special to me. It says a lot about you know, the type of people that they are off the field. And um, one thing that I thought about when I got the news was, did I do everything? Did I have fun while I was doing it? And I did, and I was just gonna come back and tell uh, my teammates that don't take anything for granted, <laughs> even practice. <laughs> you 
see he, he got a lot of juice now, so. Stop, dude, you still can't do it. <laughs> you still can't do it. Yeah, uh. One dog's still my dog, you know what I'm saying? He ain't gonna never change, no matter what. Is it too long? <laughs> you good? Oh, yeah, we got it. Yep, yeah. yeah, they get it, man. Come on, man. He wanna get on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> you messed up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even like that on camera.